Whether you like it or not, the Internet of Things, or IoT, is here to stay. This includes devices like smart thermostats, home speakers, and even our Kodi Android remote. A Raspberry Pi texting door sensor partially falls under this category because it does use the internet to communicate with us, but we can't talk back. In this case, talking back would be something like remotely arming or disarming the system, which is possible with a web server using standard HTTP GET or POST requests and an accompanying app. It turns out Node.js with Express is a reliable, popular, and easy-to-use framework for not only web apps, but also for IoT. What's up guys, welcome to AR Tech Duts, and today we're going to IoTify our door sensor. This is actually going to be a multi-part series, so stay tuned. In this first part, we'll simply be checking out how to use the GPIO interface in Node.js, while also setting up a basic web server. Ensuing parts will feature developing an Android app to the specifications set by the server. Now, I'm not going to go over much of the electronics logic behind the sensor, so please check out the original Python sensor video before continuing. But, for reference, we're simply connecting a normally closed read switch to ground and checking for a floating value, which will indicate an open door. Assuming you've already installed the latest versions of Node.js and NPM, open up the terminal and type npm init, which will let us enter some details about our project. Once that's done, we need to install several things using npm install. They are express, pygpio, debounce, and node mailer. The first thing we'll do in the software is set up PyGPIO for our little project. But first, let's understand what's going on physically first. For you rebels that didn't watch the first video, I'll get to you in a bit. For those that did watch it, please note the wiring corrections on screen. For everyone else, connect two wires to the ground and GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Then in series, connect the resistor to ground, then connect that to the ground or common node on your read switch. Then connect the wire from the normally closed node back to the GPIO pin. If instead you have a normally open switch, the digital values later on will be flipped. Back to the code, let's try for more modular file organization by separating the code responsible for the GPIO and the texting. This lets us make changes to one without affecting the other. Let's create the subfolders API and RPI within that, then create index.js. The code for GPIO is almost a carbon copy of the old Python code, with some notable differences. First, notice how we're using interrupts instead of using polling, since Node.js will generally execute things quicker than Python. Also, we have a new variable named arm, which if true, will allow us to perform a user-specified function called the callback. Then we return two functions, destroy rpi instance, which turns off the pull-up resistor, and set arm state, which is self-explanatory. However, none of this is visible when we import, or rather require, this file. So at the bottom, type module.exports equals create rpi instance, a function which is kind of like a constructor if you want to think about it that way. Now let's create the texting or mailing module. Create another folder named mail inside API and create another index.js. Also at the root of the project, create cred.json, a file where we'll store our email credentials, including the SMTP server address, the port, your email address, the recipient's SMS gateway address, and your password. Please note that you might not be able to successfully log in if you use two-factor authentication. Back to the mail index file, the code is mostly straight from the node mailer documentation, with the exception of us reading the information from the JSON file and allowing custom text to be sent in the function inside the JS object we're exporting. For node beginners, yeah, 
you can export basically anything in module.exports. And if we don't need to instantiate anything like in the old RPI index, we can straight up export an object instead of a function. Now for the good stuff. Create an open index.js in the root directory. Now let's require and instantiate express, which will help us with handling HTTP requests. And also simply require the two modules we just made. Then let's set up our message constants, an array to store all the events which the user can request for, and the function to interact with the mail module. Then set the GPIO BCM scheme pin number constant, and let's instantiate our RPI instance like it's a function, passing the arguments pin and a new callback function. Our server will allow three requests. One to just verify it's up, another to retrieve the events, and another to set the arm state. First, just a verification. We handle get requests the following way. Type app.get and the parentheses and the string forward slash. Then the next argument is the function with parameters request and response or rec and res. Then inside the function, we'll send the response as a JSON with res.status200.json with the JSON object msg connected. We use status200 because that tells the browser that there's nothing wrong. Simple enough. For the events, do the same thing except the URL will read forward slash events. Then we'll be sending the object events events. Setting the arm state is going to be a little different since we can have multiple state values, true or false. To read the values, the URL will be forward slash arm forward slash colon state. Then we can refer to it using rec or request dot params dot state. Then using that value, we can set the arm state of our system. Now, obviously it's not very secure, but uh, that's not the point, whatever. Then let's do clean up on exit. Then let's actually start the server on either the default port specified by your node environment or on port 8080 by default. Then let's test it using the command node index.js. Then let's test the events. Now let's test the arm state. This state, like I said before, will either be true or false. As you can see, everything works as intended. So thanks for watching this video guys, hope it helped. Uh, be sure to subscribe for part 2 coming soon. In the meantime, feel free to check out a recent video on this channel, and also like, share, and subscribe. And uh, goodbye, don't die, and uh, stay dry.